boys and girls. Welcome to another assembly. It's the end of the week. Hope you've really enjoyed your lessons at home or at school, depending where you've been this week. And I hope that you also have taken part in our challenge this week. Uh, a little bit more about our challenge in a minute. It's all about words. But first, to start our assembly off really well, we have a musical performance. Because Arthur has been performing recently as part of a bigger group. He's been joining online in a special event called the Nicola Benedetti Celebration Concert. He's played his instrument alongside others, and I think you'll see from this video in a moment, he's done incredibly well. So it's over to Arthur, who's taking part in this very special online concert. Wasn't that amazing? Well done to Arthur for taking part in that concert, uh, being part of a larger group of musicians, even though they were all performing actually from their own homes. So, from one virtual event to another, tomorrow we have a virtual open day where parents will be visiting the school, although they're not actually coming on site. They'll be looking at a tour of the school, a 360 degree interactive tour that you can take part in as well because it's now available on the King's website. Hope you enjoy that. Uh, but the parents who are coming tomorrow will also be looking at uh, some of the videos that we have recorded over the years. One that I'm sure you'll enjoy is a drone footage tour of the Harvard site. In other words, from the air, it shows you the barn, other parts of the site. And I thought I'd show that to you now because it just reminds us what a beautiful setting the school is in and how lovely it is. So a great way to view the Harvard site uh, from the air. Hope you really enjoyed that. Now story. It's a Greek myth. I like the Greek myths because they're full of action, full of interesting characters, and also quite often end with a moral. This story is associated with our challenge this week. We have a word challenge. Find a really interesting word in the books that you are reading or a word that you want to share with others. A word comes from this story that we often use in English, and I'll tell you what that word is shortly. First, the story, King Tantalus. King Tantalus was loved by his wife, by his son, by his subjects. He was a good king. People liked him. Probably, though, his biggest fault was that he also was in love with himself. He thought he was amazing much better than any other king or queen that had ever lived. And this was a great concern because he began to get really 
too confident about himself and also think of himself in a rather self-important way. So King Tantalus one day thought to himself, I'm such a good king, I think I'm probably more important than the gods. Now in Greek times, in ancient Greek times, this was a really bad thing to think because the ancient Greeks loved their gods and their gods looked after them, so they thought. So King Tantalus thought, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to trick the gods. They think they're so clever, but I'm cleverer than them. I can do things that gods can't do. So he thought, what am I going to do? Yes, he thought, I'm going to invite the gods to a dinner at the royal palace. They're bound to come. That's so important. So he sent out the invitations to the gods. And then he thought, my trick, what am I going to do? Oh, yes, I know. I've got a really good trick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare a special dish, a dish that the gods would never eat, and I'm going to trick them into eating it. Now, the gods would never eat a mortal. They would never eat a human. Because humans, of course, well, gods look after them. And gods would never touch a human or hurt a human in that way. But Tantalus was a bad person, thinking bad thoughts. So he decided that what he would do is he would kill his son. Dreadful. And he'd put his son into a pie. Well, can you imagine that? How awful a thought. But he thought if he served this dish, then the gods came. The gods, of course, who would never eat a mortal, might eat it and he could trick them because they wouldn't know what was in there. And if he tricked them, then he would say, Ah, oh, you gods, I've tricked you. You've eaten a mortal. And if you don't do what I say, I'm, I'm going to tell all the humans what you've done. And he would blackmail, in other words, the gods into doing what he wanted. And if the gods wouldn't do what he wanted, he would shout out loud to all of the subjects, look at those gods, they've eaten a human, they're dreadful people, they made me do it, it was, it was them all along. What bad thoughts. Well, Tantalus, on the day of this special dinner, had the dish ready on the table. The gods came in and they knew something was wrong. And they turned to him and said, you bad man, what have you done? Well, the gods being gods, of course, can do amazing things. And they brought the son back to life. And the son said, you dreadful father, what have you done? You're a very, very bad person. The gods agreed, of course, and they decided to punish Tantalus. So they took him out into his garden and they planted him in the ground. So his feet couldn't move. He couldn't jump up at all. His feet were planted with roots into the ground. And just next to him, there was an apple tree. And the apple tree was just out of reach. Well, not quite. In fact, every time the king thought the apples were just in reach, the tree's branches would sway away from him. So he couldn't get an apple at all. In fact, he had nothing to eat. And he got very hungry. And eventually he withered away. And all of the people thought, that's probably a good punishment from the gods. Because the gods have decided he's a very bad person. And that is where the word tantalise comes from. If you tantalise somebody, you put something just outside their reach. And just like King Tantalus could not reach the apples, sometimes people tantalise a person with an offer of something that doesn't actually come at all. But Tantalus, of course, was very bad. He tried to trick the gods, but he also did a horrible thing. So I guess the moral of the story is, really, you're never so important that you're more important than a god. And actually, you really should look after the people that love you. Because all of his subjects and all of his family loved Tantalus, but he was very bad and he behaved in a very bad way. Let's put our hands together for our prayer. Lord God, we thank you for all of the wonderful gifts that you give to us each and every day. Help us to be good, to be kind, to love those who love us, and always, 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 to make the most of our talents. Amen. So that was the story. We've had one piece of music already. Well done to Arthur for our early piece of music. Erin is now going to play for us. So Erin, it's over to you.
Thank you very much, Erin. A brilliant way to end this week, to end our assemblies this week. I hope you have a lovely weekend. I hope you can do lots of nice things with your family. And to finish, we're going to think about those people who have looked after lots and lots and lots of people over this very difficult period. Our NHS workers, our key workers, um, all of those who work in hospitals, in doctor surgeries, in ambulances, anyone who has been there for us during this time of national crisis. And one of the symbols that we've seen quite often is a rainbow. Rainbow is often a symbol of hope. And we're going to finish with a beautiful, beautiful song about over the rainbow and what might be beyond that. Because this song is about the lovely times that we're going to enjoy together. Hope you have a lovely weekend. I'll see you again on Monday. Bye.